Kidney stone disease is one of the most common pathologies that we'll find in the urinary tract. About 3 out of every 100 persons will have a stone in their lifetime. Different factors will influence our risk to get a stone. These include race and gender. Whites, for instance, will, will, is more likely to develop a kidney stone than Africans and men will, will, is also more likely to develop a stone compared to women. However, stones are on the rise in women as well. Where do these stones come from? Our urine contains many minerals and salts and if these minerals and salts are in a high enough concentration in the urine, stones will form. Kidney stones can usually start quite small in the urinary tract, usually in the kidney, but they can develop and become quite big. Usually, if they stay in the kidney, they are asymptomatic, which means we don't have any symptoms from them. But if they travel down the ureter, which is the pipe that connects the kidney and the bladder, they can get lodged in the ureter and cause obstruction to the flow of urine. And that can be quite symptomatic and very painful. What are the symptoms of kidney stones? When a stone passes from the kidney down the ureter, and get lodged, it can cause obstruction to the flow of urine. This causes a buildup of urine in the kidney, which causes a swelling of the kidney. The medical term for this is hydronephrosis. This condition is quite painful and can present with an acute colic pain, usually starting at the back, radiating to the groin. It can present with blood in the urine, a severe urge to pass urine. Men can sometimes present with a pain at the tip of the penis. A lot of patients also present with nausea and vomiting. What are kidney stones made of? Kidney stones comes in many different shapes and color. The most common type of kidney stone is a calcium stone. There's two different calcium stones, calcium oxalate and calcium phosphate. Calcium oxalate is by far the most common types of stones. Calcium stones make up about 80% of kidney stones. The second most common type of kidney stone is uric acid stones. Uric acid is excreted in the urine. It's a waste product of protein metabolism. And when excreted in the urine, it can form uric acid crystals. These crystals can lead to kidney stone formation, especially in acidic urine. Certain risk factors are predisposed to uh, uric acid stone formation, like being overweight, taking a high protein diet, and uh, being a diabetic. Other types of kidney stones will include uh, struvite stones, these stones are usually associated with chronic urinary tract infections. Um, certain bacteria causes the urine to be alkaline and then certain minerals can form uh, stones. These minerals include magnesium, ammonium and phosphate. The least common type of kidney stone is cysteine stones. Cysteine is an amino acid that's excreted in the urine and under normal conditions should be absorbed back into the body. In certain people, the, the cysteine cannot be reabsorbed and then the concentration of cysteine increases in the urine and that can lead to kidney stone formation. This is a, a rare inherited condition and often present with stones in childhood. What are the causes of kidney stones? The most significant cause of kidney stone formation is low urine volume. Constant low urine volume is a major risk factor, factor for stone formation. If you have a low urine volume, then the minerals and salts in the urine reach high concentrations and that can lead to precipitation and stone formation. If you have a history of previous stone formation, you need to excrete at least two and a half liters a day. 
And if you take into account that you also lose fluid through breathing, stools uh, and sweating, you need to take at least three liters a day to prevent kidney stone formation. Diet also plays a role in kidney stone formation. A diet high in animal proteins, proteins from beef, fish, chicken and pork, lead to acidic urine. Acidic urine leads to increased incidence in the formation of calcium oxalate and uric acid stones. Obesity plays a role in stone formation. Certain medical conditions like hyperparathyroidism and renal tubular acidosis plays a role in kidney stone formation. Certain medication, especially vitamin C supplementation, increase your risk to form stones. And of course, there's a genetic uh, factor that plays a role. If you have a family member with kidney stones, unfortunately, your chances is also increased. How do we diagnose kidney stones? If a stone is suspected, the following diagnostic eva evaluation will be done. Firstly, an ultrasound, a CT scan, blood test, and a urine analysis. These in diagnostic tests is to firstly diagnose the stone, secondly, to determine the size and, and the location of the stone, and then lastly, to see if there's any infection or impaired, impaired kidney function associated with the stone. These factors can all have influence in the treatment of the stone. How do we treat kidney stones? Treatment of kidney stones will depend on the following. Firstly, the size of the stone. Secondly, the location of the stone. The hardness of the stone, if the pain can be controlled. The length of time since the symptoms have started. And lastly, if there's any signs of infection or renal function impairment associated with the stone. Options of treatment will include, firstly, wait for the stone to pass by itself. A small stone that's lodged close to the bladder will have a big chance to pass spontaneously. A period of up to three weeks can be given for, for the stone to pass by itself. Secondly, medication can also be tried in, uh, to, to help for the stone to pass easier. Drugs such as tamsulosin is known to relax the ureter and increase the chances for the stone to pass spontaneously. Conservative treatment of kidney stones can only be done if the pain is bearable. The second option for kidney stones treatment is surgical treatment. Surgical treatment is indicated in the following cases. Firstly, if it's a big stone that's either in the kidney or in the top part of the ureter. Secondly, if a patient has got impaired kidney function already. And lastly, in patients with proven urinary tract infections. In these cases, we cannot watch and wait for the stone to pass on its own. What will the surgical options of kidney stone management include? There's a few surgical options available to the urologist in treating kidney stones. The first option is ESWL, which is uh, a short for extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. This form of treatment is ideal for medium-sized kidney stones that is not in, lodged in the ureter, but is still inside the kidney. These are usually asymptomatic stones. ESWL works where sound waves are focused on the stone and then used to break the stone down into smaller pieces. When these pieces are small enough, they can then pass spontaneously through the ureter. One of the downsides of ESWL is that sometimes the pieces are not small enough and that the, these bigger pieces can then either stay inside the kidney and become bigger stones again or 
They can travel down the ureter and become symptomatic. A second option of surgical treatment is ureteroscopy. Ureteroscopy is where the urologist will pass a small telescope through the bladder into the ureter up to the level of the stone. This is an ideal way of treatment to treat stones inside the ureter and also sometimes smaller stones inside the kidney itself. When the stone is reached and the urologist can see the stone, the urologist can then use a special device called a, a stone basket to grab the stone and pull the stone down the ureter. In uh, cases where the stone is too big for the stone to, to be pulled down the ureter, the urologist can use a laser to break the stone down into smaller pieces and then remove these small pieces with a stone basket. After this procedure, a stent is usually placed and the stent is placed because of swelling after the procedure. The stent will keep the ureter open so that there can still be normal urine flow after stone management. The last option at the urologist's disposal is a percutaneous nephrolithotomy. During this procedure, a small incision is made in the back and a telescope is placed through the back into the kidney. This is ideal way of treatment for bigger stones lodged inside the kidney. Once the urologist are inside the kidney with his telescope, he can break the stone down with special devices. These devices not only break the stone down, but can also suck the stone fragments out, out of the kidney. After this procedure, a tube is placed inside the kidney for kidney for urinary drainage and patients are usually in hospital for a little longer. What dietary advice can we give to prevent kidney stones? Firstly, we should increase our fluid intake. For a recurrent stone former, you should take at least three liters of water per day. Secondly, we must reduce the amount of salt in the diet. Salt increases the risk for calcium oxalate stones as well as for uric acid stones. Salt is found in many foods that we don't necessarily think about, especially in cheeses, canned foods, canned salts, bread, and also in pickles and olives. Um, we should increase our fruits and vegetable intake we should eat less meat. Meat increases the amount of acid in the body and in the urine, which can increase our risk to develop calcium oxalate and uric acid stones. We should decrease food with high oxalate content. Foods that include high oxalate is rhubarb, spinach and almond nuts. We should not decrease our calcium intake. It's been shown in the, in the literature that if we decrease our calcium intake, our risk for stone formation increase, as well as our bone health will also get worse. 